the championships begin today, and heroes will emerge. Welcome to Wimbledon on TNT. Big Ben has announced the 1 o'clock hour. And at the All England Club, it is opening day of the championships, Wimbledon. We have had a string of sunny days here, and there is no rain in the forecast today. The hottest day of the year so far. Moments ago, Pete Sampras, the all-time leading man in Grand Slam titles, took center court. In a few moments, he will begin his quest for a fifth straight singles crown here, which would match Bjorn Borg. You'll see his first round match against Spain's Francisco Clavet live here on TNT. Hello, everybody. Ernie Johnson in our studio adjacent to Court 18 for what has been called breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Wimbledon. We're with you for 12 hours today and tomorrow, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the East. And in all, over the next two weeks or fortnight, there, I've said it for the first time, we'll bring you 83 hours of coverage on TNT. If you're home today, settle in. If you're off to work, we'll be here when you get back. And some of the featured matches today on opening day, the remarkable comeback story of Jennifer Capriotti continues. She meets the 110th ranked player in the world, Maria Vento, today. The 1997 champion, Martina Hingis, taking on Virginia Pasquale of Spain. And Andy Roddick, if you haven't seen this kid play, he plays on court 18. He's only 18 years old. He's uh, a phenom taking on Ivo Hoiberger of Switzerland. We already have a result. Play began about an hour ago. All right, it took 39 minutes for Serena Williams to win her first round match. She feasted at lunchtime on Kish, Rita Kuda Kish of Hungary. 6 1, 6 love. Barely breaking a sweat. Meantime, a battle of Americans on the men's side today. Jan Michael Gamble and Chris Woodruff. And they are playing on court 18. First set goes to Chris Woodruff, who, who beat Gamble in the Australian in five sets. So he takes the first set here, and they are in between the first and the second. What's really nice about that match is that they are playing it as I've said, on court 18, which is which is right there. And, and later, Andy Roddick is playing on this same court, so I don't know about you, but I'm going nowhere as the day goes on. Before we take you to center court for the uh, Pete Sampras match, let's throw a little water on a story that caught fire over the weekend that uh, Pete Sampras might retire. This is the Sunday London Telegraph, quoting Sampras is telling our Jim Courier that if he were to win his eighth Wimbledon title here this year, that he would retire. Now, Pete didn't say this year. Here's what he did say. Can you could you imagine a dream ending where you come out here and you win, let's say, your 10th Wimbledon, and then you just say, you know what? I've had enough. I'm walking away after I win. Would you be able to walk away after you win, or would you have to wait until you weren't winning anymore? No, I could walk away uh, after a win. Yeah. And I, you think, you dream about how you might end it, you know, and, and you love to, to play your last match here and win it. I mean, that would be a great way to, to end your, your run at Wimbledon. Um, you know, it's just like if it's Jordan. I mean, he's coming back, so it's, uh, it's hard to say. But and you have the seniors to look forward that's to. That's right, <laughs> senior tour. Uh, but yeah, in, a, in a, a perfect scenario, you'd love to play your last match here and win it and, and call it a career. Um, but who, who knows what the future, uh, you know, what's going to happen, so we'll see. So you can uh, hold off on that balloon bouquet that says, uh, good luck and uh, we'll miss you. Uh, it's not going to happen yet. Meantime, uh, Marv Albert standing by at center court along with a Scoop. Yeah. Uh, what's going on, guys? All right, thanks, uh, Ernie. <laughs> Jim, now that we've cleared up the misquote, once again, you are swirling in controversy. Well, that's not fair, Marv. Clearly, the British press are at it again. Um, you saw for yourself, Pete Sampras is going nowhere, but trying to win his eighth title here. Uh, he's ready to keep playing for a while. He doesn't even know when it's going to stop. All right, on, on the... 
on the subject of the success of Pete Sampras. Uh, here he's gunning for a fifth consecutive Wimbledon crown. As you mentioned, looking for number eight. Has not been playing particularly well coming well, in. What's his mindset? It, it really really doesn't matter, Marv. When he gets here, his serve just takes over for him. You see him, look at his breakpoint like record. 93. Well, Jim there's only Curry. one guy that can really dominate on his serve, and clearly that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at even Isovich, who he hates playing here. 0-2 oh in 94. 2 of 9 in 98. If you can't beat, if you can't break Pete Sampras's serve, you're not really going to beat him because he's tough in tiebreakers, and that's been the key to his success. He's just really hard to break on this surface. And a look at Pete getting ready for Francisco Clavet, the 32-year-old out of Madrid, Spain. Now a year ago here at Wimbledon, injured, barely practicing during the course of the week, Sampras reached the finals against Patrick Rafter. A double fault cost him the first set tiebreak, 12-10, down 4-1 of the second tiebreak. He rallied, was able to square the match, and then took it at four, setting the all-time men's grand slam mark of 13 singles titles. Celebrating with his mom and his dad and his fiance, now his wife, Bridget Wilson. Uh, that was just, uh, he, he was really, really close to losing that match, Marv. He, he was down 4-1 in the second set tiebreaker, and with his bum shin mm. that he was hobbling on the whole fortnight, if he doesn't get through that second set tiebreaker and he's down two sets to love, I don't think there's any way Pete Sampras was going to climb back out of that hole. We've been talking about Pete career title 63 which is climbing up closing in on Connors but he's got quite a way to go you see that he's 22nd on the champions race which is uh, how he's doing year to date so far so clearly not his best year leading into Wimbledon um, but once you get here none of that really matters because Pete Sampras is a totally different player on this surface uh, he has the fear factor in the locker room guys are afraid of Pete Sampras unlike the French Open where guys th consider him to be a good draw when he comes here, Pete Sampras walks into this court. People are seeing, he looks like he's about seven feet tall out there. And Francisco Clavet coming out is a clay quarter in general, although he has had success on the hard courts later in his career. And at 32 years old, he's really, uh, he's really come on late in his career as an all-court player, but grass is not his surface. He hasn't had great results here. Um, he's having a decent year. He started off very well, but he, he's had an injury as of late, Marv. He, he had to pull out of a warm-up tournament uh, over in Halle, Germany, uh, two weeks ago with an injury. Had some tendonitis, um, but here he is playing Wimbledon. One of the few Spaniards here. So Wimbledon 2001 underway here on, on TNT. Francisco Clavet is a southpaw. What problems does that present for Pete Sampras? Well, generally speaking, that, that could create problems, but the good news for, for Sampras is that Clavette does not possess a cannon serve. Pete's going to get a look at his serve and an opportunity to do things just like that, which is to get in and put pressure on Clavette. That's Didn't enough. do enough with that one, but this is the first game of the match. These guys are just warming up. This is I don't look for these guys to come out firing away, straight away. Probably a little nervous on both sides. This is the fourth time that they have met Sampras winning the previous three matches. Yeah, he's going for the uh, the career slam here against Clavet. He's beat him on the, the other three surfaces. He's beat him on clay, hard, and indoors. If he can beat him here, he will really be his, uh, as the tour players like to say, pigeon. Oh. If you beat a guy three times running, he's your pigeon. Beat him four times running on four different surfaces. See, knowing the kind of guy you are, I know you would never bring that up to an opponent. Not unless uh, they were my pigeon. So Francisco Clavet taking this first game. first game. You mentioned the ATP rank of Pete Sampras at five. He's that's at the time of the seeding. He is the number one seed here at Wimbledon as the defending champion. Right. For the first time, they've they've seeded 32 players here instead of 16. A bit of a compromise. Uh, some of the clay court players have been complaining about the fact that Pete Sampras is seeded. He's ranked number five, actually number six as of today in the in the rankings, and he's number the number one seed here. And they don't like the fact that on grass he gets that 
privilege of being moved up in the seatings where on clay, he's always seated where he's ranked. And if he were seated accordingly, based on his clay court record, he would certainly be moving down in the seatings. 15 old. Bit of a compromise there, 128 miles an hour. Has a little something to do with Pete Sampras holding a few trophies here. 30-15. And that's the serve right there that I think he's gonna use a lot today, Marv. The, the slider out wide to Clavette's backhand. Clavette with a two-hander is gonna have a difficult time putting Pete under any pressure at all. Just pick it on the backhand. Clavette bothered by tendonitis in his left 40, shoulder. For the most part during the European clay court season, winning only three. 12 matches. Yeah, which is rare for him because that's a surface that he should excel on. Oh. Luckily for him, he did play well in the early goings of this year, so his ranking is holding in there. Getting back to the seedings, Marv. Cool Players team. like Gustavo Kirtan and, and Alex Karecha, um, Marat Safin have been talking uh, about about the fact that the rankings reflect 52 weeks of play and that seating should be based accordingly. You should be rewarded if you've had a good year. Regardless of the surface. And Sampras. As we see Sampras hold serve for the first time this year, but probably a few more coming. <laughs> Hasn't dropped One serve game. since the second round of last year. But uh, getting back to the seatings, these guys have a point, in my opinion, that on clay, they're better players than a guy like Pete Sampras is on clay, and yet he's been the number one seed there countless times. Uh, and a guy like Kirtan would come here this year as a number one player on tour, and he would probably be seated somewhere around three or four behind uh, Sampras, Agassi, and Rafter, just due to his grass court results, which is what they're basing these seedings on. Oh. Are there any seedings that will please all the players? Is there well, any system that would work? Well, I think that the players, if they just maintained the rankings, the players probably wouldn't complain too much. But personally, I think it's a good move, particularly on the extreme surfaces like of grass here at Wimbledon and the slow clay courts at the French Open. I think it's, I think it's important to, to move around accordingly. I think it, on the harder surfaces that are a little uh, more medium, like the, the hard courts at the US Open and the rebound ace in Australia, everyone kind of can play their own game on that. But a serve and volleyer will struggle on clay, and a baseliner generally struggles on the grass. He's starting to find the range. 97 mile an hour second serve is not going to bother him a whole lot. Uh, you see Kirtan out with a right leg of Karecha. Those are your two finalists from the French Open. And uh, those injuries are a little dubious, I think, at best. I think they're both just taking a little breather during the grass court season. Filipusis, Krychek, both threats to win this title. Pete Sampras would have to be happy that, that uh, those two contenders are not here. <laughs> That is pretty. 15-40. Clavette hits it, doesn't do much with this, but Pete, instead of hitting over it, which most guys would do, knows that Clavette is going to be moving to the open court, so he just steers it with a slice back behind him. Gives himself two break points. Pete not really being aggressive on that point, but probably not feeling like he needs to. I think he might have been a little surprised that Clavette even came in on that. That's a good serve right down the tee. 116 Jeez. miles an hour. Might as well take advantage of the slick grass courts and slide that lefty one in there. Oh. 
advantage Sampras. First double fall of the match. And Pete Sampras with a third break point. Okay, Sampras. So, Pete Sampras with a two games to one lead in this opening set. to center court at Wimbledon. Pete Sampras, the defending champion in his opening match against Francisco Clavet, 32-year-old out of Madrid, Spain. A moment ago, Sampras breaking serve. Up two games to one. Love 15. Pete's on the sunny side now as a right-hander. He's got the sun right where his ball toss is, so he might have to adjust that for the next few hours. But if anyone's used to it, it's Pete, although he is playing an hour earlier this year for his opening match. Generally speaking, it's a 2 o'clock start. <laughs> Those are two overheads that you can see that Pete's... I'm surprised that he didn't let them bounce because you see that he's kind of looking for it up in the sky and not 15. really sure. He didn't take an aggressive swing at either of those. It's more of a hidden hope. That situation, I like to let the ball bounce so I don't have to worry so much about the sun. And apparently the fans have adjusted to the uh, the new starting time. It's a packed house here at center court. When you got center court tickets, I think you get here early. <laughs> not so easy to come by. Particularly on Second a day as, as warm and beautiful it is, as it is here today, you know, you see the weather coming in early, beautiful leading into the tournament. You just think to yourself, oh, no, it's going to, as a player, you, it's going to catch up to us at some point. 30-15. As Ernie mentioned earlier, 85 degrees, hottest day of the year at Wimbledon. And uh, shall we say no rain in the forecast? I think that's a safe bet at the moment. Uh, look at Pete Sampras. Make that look so easy. It's, it's what the great players do. They make the tough things look Full second nature. Now he's done it enough times. It is second nature, but just bends down for that shot, guides it back behind his opponent. Again, on a slippery day, first day on the grass, movement a little more tenuous Ooh, for the Sampras. players because the grass is still new. It hasn't been roughed up yet. No one's played on this court but four Sampras women. Leads. Three games to one. The play uh, on the Sunday or Saturday before the tournament starts. So the grass is still a little green. So going behind your opponent is a good move. As we mentioned earlier, it's the fourth time that Sampras and Clavette have met. Sampras winning the previous three matches. This is the first time they've uh, met on grass. Their last meeting, November of 99, in the second round of the oh. Tennis Masters Series in Paris. Sampras winning two sets to one. Winning seven, six, and a third on an indoor carpet, but indoor carpet isn't what it once was. It's now a slow surface. A little, a little off with that one. Fifteen. Left. Back in the, the, the late 80s, early 90s, all the indoor tournaments were extremely quick, and kind of in the mid 90s, they started slowing those courts up. So the players like Clavette, more of all-court games, baseliners have been doing better in those surf in those surfaces. Uh, do not go to Pete Sampras's forehand when he leaves it open over there. He's just luring you. He's baiting you to go there so he can run over and do just this. Spank. No chance. I asked you earlier about Sampras facing left-handers. He is actually 9-1 and one 
lifetime against Southpaws. Uh, here at Wimbledon, the only loss to uh, Goran Ivanisevic uh, in the semis back in 92. Well, Pete hasn't lost to too That's many people, right. period, right. here. <laughs> Did you adjust for Southpaws? You know, I liked playing Southpaws, actually, Marv. I, I, uh, I was able to, to play a lot into their backhand corner, which is generally the forehand corner, obviously, for the right-handed players, and, and open them up, go to their forehands. And most players are used to moving to their backhand side to kind of defend that. And 30, I 30. reverse psychology went to their forehands a lot, opened them to the backhand, then went to their forehand for the kill shot, and that seemed to work for me. Game Clavette. So it's 3-2 Sampras in this first set. All right, during the course of the day, we'll be switching around to other significant matches. Marat Safin and Julian Knoll out of Austria just getting underway. That's uh, court one, court 18. Chris Woodruff won the first set. Jan Michael Gamble up a break in the second. And here on center court, Pete Sampras with a three games to two lead in the first set against Francisco Clavet of Spain. And the whiff mm. of the return. 116 mile an hour second serve there. Uh, off the line, you see the chalk fly. Perhaps a little bit of a bad bounce there. Sampras will change up so effective throwing different speeds at you. He can. 30 left. He goes, he'll go with a 116 mile an hour second serve, then he'll come on the same side. He'll go out wide with a 99 mile an hour wide serve. Keeps you honest like a pitcher. It's what he, why, a couple of the reasons he's is effective. That's one of them. Another one is that his ball toss is the same for every serve that he hits. Ooh. That's a nice little pickup by Clevet. Sampras can hit the one down the tee. And the change up out wide, the slider, with the same motion. You just have to guess eventually. Mm. See Clavette moving over to cover the down the middle serve there. Guess wrong. 14, 15. Number five in the ace department for Pete Sampras. Sampras. So Pete Sampras now Sampras up four games, four games to, two. to two in this opening set. You see Pete's draw. Going out, he really getting through to the fourth round. He has a very easy draw uh, for Wimbledon standards. Not a whole lot of grass quarters, but once he gets out there, Roger Federer, a very talented Swiss player, has actually modeled his game on Pete Sampras's a real up-and-comer. And you see Gamble, who's out struggling right now, scheduled to line up with Tim Henman. Todd Martin is also in that section of the draw. That's really, it is the tough section of the draw in Henman and Gamble's section there. But they have to come out to play Pete, who's going to have coasted seemingly out there unless Federer can give him some trouble. And always incredible pressure here in his home country on Tim Henman. Absolutely. Sampras not happy with this no call here. Jerry Armstrong in the chair, a veteran official. Pete has a way of letting you know that you made a mistake without being too demonstrative about it. See that one? Actually, I think Pete made a mistake there. That looked right on the line. Jerry is one of the tour veterans. Pete will have a lot of respect for him. 40 love. For Clavetta's eighth appearance at Wimbledon last year, won his opening round match, and then lost to the number nine seed, Tomas Enkvist. Just happy that Clavette comes over to play. Have so many of his fellow countrymen from Spain who just decide that they want to take the month off and prepare themselves for the second half of the clay court season. Francisco Clavette, whole serve will be back in a moment. 
Anna Kornikova. Congratulations, you won a car. <laughs> Go to lightboys.com for your chance to win Anna Kornikova's convertible. She'll even join you for a test drive. Did we just leave Anna Kornikova sitting on our front steps? you dig on like us, the more chances you have to win honest stuff. Philadelphia, here we come. Mmm, I can't smell this cheesesteak. Sorry, Frankie, that one's not cheesesteak. Now here's a matchup that doesn't stink. Chipper Jones and the Braves head to Philadelphia to battle for the division lead. Deep left center field, it's gone. It's the defending champs against the team that would be king. Braves, Philly, 7 Eastern tonight on TBS Superstation. Pete Sampras with a 4-3 lead on Francisco Clavet. Well, this opening center court to match the projected bottom half of the draw. Andre Agassi will uh, open up against uh, Peter Vessel, who beat uh, Safin and Rafter the past a tough, he's a tough left-hander. If Andre can get past his first-round match, he's actually got a very good draw up until the fourth round minutes. or so where he could meet the veteran Wayne Ferreira. Bottom half, really not quite as strong as the top. Top half. You know, it's, you got Safin, who is a little bit of a question mark. The bottom half, you do have the two Australians, Rafter and Hewitt. Hewitt, the hottest grass court player along with Thomas Johansson of Sweden. They both won two warm-up tournaments coming in. So if you look at this draw, see Hewitt projected into the quarterfinals with Agassi. That could really be a popcorn match, Marv. That, uh, I'll pay a ticket for that one. And uh, in the top section of this one, Kafelnikov, really the question mark. He's a guy who no one is talking about, oh! but could easily sneak through and win this title. He's won two slams before. He knows what it takes, but he's a little mercurial. Sometimes you just don't know what you're getting with him. Rafter will be a crowd favorite. He's, he's spoken of potentially retiring at the end of this year. So he will, uh, as usual, be gunning for this, with, but maybe with a little extra gusto this year. He didn't say that in an interview with you, did he? The no, retirement. no, no, they, that would be uh, in the Daily Telegraph. I see. Yep. Rafter, Rafter going to the final against Pete Sampras uh, here at Wimbledon last year. Eight aces in the first set. Mm. <laughs> about to get to his fifth game. It's only 20 points, eight of them on aces. James Sampras. Make that nine. <laughs> Is there any wonder why he's so good on the surface? Sampras leads five games to three. Marv, do you get the feeling that Pete's not having a good season so far after watching this first set? You, you could never tell. Not a, it's, not a uh, is, is it reached the point where he is basically playing for Wimbledon and perhaps one other event? Well, I think he's out. playing for four other events. He's playing for only the Grand Slams right now, and he's utilizing the other oh. tournaments that he plays, such as Queens, two weeks ago here on the grass, as preparation in order to get ready to win slams. That's all that Pete cares about. Ooh, that's a bit of a flyer. This is the first time up. in 10 years that Sampras has not won at least one ATP title coming into this tournament. In fact, this is the, uh, the longest drought of his professional career. Hasn't won a title since here last year. Sweet little backhand down the line. He's had a lot, of, a lot of things going on in his life. He got married after 15. the U.S. Open. We have to remember that he was one match away from winning the U.S. Open last year. And in my opinion, his legs were taken out from him in the semifinal against Leighton Hewitt, and then Safin played the match of his career. There's nothing Pete could really do. He hasn't quite found the range 15. on a couple shots, but his serve is working. I'm not too worried about this set for Pete. Now, Pete did get married at the end of last year. He didn't play for the rest of the season outside of the, the, the last tournament of the year for that best eight players on tour, the tour championships in Lisbon. It's a little reflective time for Pete Sampras, actually having a little bit of a life outside of the game for once. I think, personally, I think it's healthy. It's going to keep him in this game longer 
If he kept grinding to the point where he was a few years ago, I think that he would be stepping away from the game sooner than later. A good play by no Clavette, not a bad approach deep. Pete lines it up and puts it right where you'd want to if you were drilling, right in the corner. 19 winners for Sampras. <laughs> Forty thirty. Over on court 18, Jan Michael Gamble now up five games to two in the second set. Chris Woodruff taking Dan the first set. <laughs> and that will do it. We'll be right back. to Wimbledon. And on court three, Barry Cowan, Mark Hilton, just underway. Cowan is up two sets to love. This is the, the winner of, of this match. We'll play against Pete Sampras. Uh, we got a couple Brit matches going on on the outside court. It's actually strange to see Tim Hinman outside of the center court complex on the first day. Been a long time since, he, since he's had to play an outside court match. But he's a heavily favored. 15 love. And on heavily favored out there. Center court, Sampras up five games to four in this first set against Francisco Clavet. You know, Pete has looked a little rusty in places in his game everywhere except his serve. His serve is just a well-oiled machine right here. Clavette's just he's guessing. He's, he couldn't be guessing wrong. At every time he's guessing wrong, it seems like. 11th ace for Sampras. Serving for the set. And for set Sampras. That's the, uh, the signature move by Pete Sampras, but wisely let it go as he takes this first set. The 2001 Championships Wimbledon on TNT are brought to you by IBM. www.wimbledon.org, the official website of the 2001 Championships, is an IBM e-business. And by Cadillac, the fusion of design and technology. Let's check in on court 18. Chad Michael Gamble 15, lost the first set. 6-4 to Chris Woodruff. And Gamble is serving for the second set. Chad Michael Gamble, 24 years old, out of Spokane, Washington. Chad Michael, a quarterfinalist last year, really his breakthrough tournament in a Grand Slam. Playing out against his fellow countryman, Chris Woodruff. And these guys have been battling this year. This is their third matchup this year, and they've had a five-setter in Australia. 15, 14. But Woodruff won, and they had a, a three-setter where Woodruff had match points down in Florida earlier this year that Gamble came back and won, really started kick-started Gamble's season. Now Woodruff has got himself into, into a couple breakpoint positions right now, 15-40, to get back on serve here in the second set. Service. Chris Woodruff trying to break a five-match losing streak, including his last four opening round matches. Mentioned Gamble making it to the quarterfinals, lost to the eventual champion Pete Sampras at Wimbledon last year. That's a good save there. Big serve down the tee. 30-40. Chan Michael can bring the heat on his serve. It's his 14th ace. He's tall and he plays with, with one of those longer rackets. So he gets a little, even a little extra leverage. So he can hit down on the court a little bit easier. Six foot four, 215. Well, that's two good saves right there. 
I think he uses that long racket actually more because he's two hands on both sides, which gives him a little bit more leeway at the back of the court. A little more limited if you're a two-hander on both sides, movement-wise. Chad Michael also in the midst of the best season of his career. He's played very well. Oh! Really, that match against Chris down in Florida where he was down a few match points there, kick-started him. He, he managed to go on from there, win that tournament, and go on a streak of about four tournaments where he was playing fantastic tennis and always winning the big points, saving 11 match points in, in a string of matches. Perhaps the confidence he gained from, from the match against Woodruff propelled him to, uh, to hold off on those big pressure points, but he is playing. He's had the best season of his career so far. Set point, Jan Michael Gamble. That's a bad mistake there. A little tentative on that one. He wasn't really even going for a winner. Don't want to give away a point on set point like that. Want to make your opponent play, beat you. Jan Michael, one of the so-called heartthrobs on <laughs> the tour. Who gave him the name Hollywood? He's sitting right to your yeah. left, Marv. Advantage Campbell. Woodruff missing on his better side there, the backhand. He's got one of the better two-handed backhand down the lines on tour. Campbell's got a very tasty backhand down the line himself, though. Both of these guys not afraid to change the direction of the ball. Bad tactical play there by Woodruff to go cross court instead of going into Gamble's weaker side, the forehand on that. Uh, uh, Surprised yes. he's continuing to pick on his backhand a little bit. I, I talked to Chris a couple days ago and he said it, it's clear that he, if he can, if he has time on grass, he wants to go to Jan Michael's forehand. That's the side that he wants to pick on. It's the one that will break down a little bit more. And it plays perfectly into his backhand down the line to what get is? there. But maybe he's had some success early here in the first set going to the backhand. <gasps> oh! Woodruff. Woodruff has been making a few changes in his game this year as well, working with a new coach, Mike DePalmer, from his hometown in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mike told me that he's changed, a, changed his serve a little bit, tried to get his grip a little flatter so he can flatten out the serve and not miss in the net as much, and also changed his forehand. Got him to kind of get prepared a little earlier on the forehand so he wouldn't be quite as rushed, which should pay off for him on a surface like grass where the ball accelerates off of the court. Yes. And that was right in, in Woodruff's, Woodruff's wheelhouse. Just missed it in net. That's a big serve under pressure. Takes him to set point again. I could hear EJ clapping there in the studio. Did you hear that? Ernie uh, has the vantage point right outside of court 18. That's the, uh, the studio setting. Oh. Juice. Unlucky there for the ball to bounce back on the tape. Wimbledon tapes are usually a lot looser than the other tapes around the world for reasons unknown. 
generally speaking, you'll get a lot of balls that will just dribble over the net here that normally would sit up on other courts. That one came back like a harder net court. Advantage Campbell. 16 aces. Jan Michael. There you see the Woodruff backhand up the line. He's got a very simple swing on his backhand. There's not a lot to go wrong with it. Just lines it up, takes a good crack at it. Sampras and Clavette playing on center court. One apiece in the second set. We'll get back to that match shortly. Pete Sampras taking the first set, 6-4. Check some Moscow. <laughs> Replay the points. Here, Chris kind of, Chris Woodruff cry out as that ball was called wide. He knew that ball was right on the line. Quickly overruled by the umpire. Chris does like to take that forehand up the line on the return. If you take him out wide, one of the better practice players on tour he used to regularly spank me, 6-0, 6-1 in practice, something like that. I asked him why, why he didn't play like that in matches all the time, and he said he just he didn't know he felt freer on the practice court. I don't think just looser, right? No well, pressure. Most guys are like that. I never wanted to be the best practice player, and I never was. <laughs> Chris Woodruff, 28 years old, out of Knoxville, Tennessee, All-American, at the University of Tennessee. Nice backhand going to the weaker side. Gamble didn't even run for that. Yes. You and Chris played an exhibition match, uh, what, several years ago, helping raise $35,000 for the Greater Knoxville Boys and Girls Club. Thanks for your contribution, Marv. We appreciated that check. That the was check very kind of will you. be in the mail. <laughs> that was kind of you. Chris is a hometown. Hometown boy there in Knoxville does a lot for his community. Had I known you in 97, it <laughs> would have been no question. turns to it. Unlucky here. Woodruff comes in, makes a good pick up here. And Sean Michael hits a pretty average passing shot, and that ball sticks on the tape. That was going to be a winner, that volley. Takes us back to set point again. Number six. Oh, ball girl. Maybe has a bloody nose. I don't think she would have gotten hit with anything. Always a little unsettling as a player when you see one of the ball girls or ball boys go down. Particularly when you're responsible when you've hit them with the ball inadvertently. Tied at one. 
We welcome you back to opening day at the All England Club. Wimbledon's coverage here on TNT. Checking in on court one and court two, where the number six seed Tim Henman and the number four seed Marat Safin are facing qualifiers today. And Safin won his first set, as did Henman, as they play the second set of both of those matches. Meantime, uh, here I am at court 18. This is the vantage point as we watch uh, Jan Melko Gamble and, and Chris Woodruff who have split the first two sets, and I'm going to continue to watch this match as uh, we go back to Marv Albert and Jim Courier, who will have been calling this, and now they're going to call some more of, of Pete Sampras and Francisco Clavette. Twelve hours of coverage here today, boys and girls. Thanks for being here. All right, thank you, Ernie. And a change of rackets for Pete Sampras, who makes many changes during the course of a match. You see there, 2-2 two -two in the second set. Sampras taking the first set, 6-4. Just a shot of Clavette's. I think that's his brother in the stands. Francisco, one of four children in a, in a tennis playing family. His older brother, 15, 30. Jose, and Francisco have teamed up in doubles play. That's right. His older brother was on tour for quite some time. I don't think he's playing any longer. Good family on tour. Still waiting for our first sighting of Pete Sampras' wife, if the uh, cameras would be so kind, the British cameras would be so kind to show us. 30 or? She's quite good, easy on the eyes up there. I think that's uh, what they call good TV, Marv. It, it took, let's see, went into the second set before you <laughs> made the request. Oh. Uh, Bridget Wilson, who is an actress. She is a sweetie, too. Pete's a lucky oh. fellow. I think she's pretty lucky, also. Pete's a pretty nice fellow himself. Oh. That's a good get by Clavette there. That was stinging for him by Sampras into the corner. Clavette makes... Great effort to get over there and put something on 14, that passing 13. shot. Sampras just missing the drop volley. Pete Sampras, the defending champion last year, winning for the seventh time. There's his opponent, Francisco Clavet, who's been bothered by tendonitis in his left shoulder for the most part. Clavet, European clay court season, and he's able to. Hold serve takes a three games to two lead of the second set. Clavet leads. Welcome back to center court at Wimbledon. Marv Albert with Jim Courier, Francisco Clavet. Time. Holding serve, taking a three games to two lead of the second set after Pete Sampras opened with a 6 4 advantage in the first set. Uh, Pete not really in too much danger, hasn't faced a break point on his serve yet. Just kind of biding his time in this set, hoping to get a, a break, really a, a clutch passing shot by Clavette at 30 all the last game. Saved him. P coming out to serve back into the sun again. And there's a serve that Pete Sampras didn't used to have. He didn't used to use that body serve. 15 left. Just a couple of years ago, I think Tony Trabert the great ex-champion from the United States mentioned it on air and mentioned it to Pete at the U.S. Open that why don't you ever go out into the body? You go out wide, you go down the middle, but you're, you're missing the, the, the serve to the middle. You can freeze an opponent. And the next match Pete mm. played. An he example had a <laughs> of the power of the airwaves. The airwaves coming through. Any suggestions that you would like to offer, Jim? Um, I have no suggestions here at Wimbledon, perhaps at the French Open. I see. <laughs> Licking the racket, oh. an interesting tactic. <laughs> Get the lucky saliva on there. Let's first serves. That's one I haven't seen. It's a Spanish custom. I've seen that on golf yeah. courses, you know, Try and lick, the, mm -hmm. lick your golf ball to get moisture on it so you can clean it. But uh, 
Um, tennis rackets. First service. Well, Pete Sampras, 29 years old, will be 30 in August as you look at the oldest Wimbledon champions. Arthur Ashe, at the age of 31, born in 1975. Rod Laver in 69 was 30 years of age. Yeah, Pete Sampras, 29 this year, will be 30 later this summer. But his serve is not 29 years old. That serve is such a smooth motion. That's something that he can carry with him if he goes injury free for a very long time and, and he'll be a contender at this tournament if not the favorite for many many more years as long as he's still serving well <laughs> fine return by Clavette there clipping the tape he couldn't Don't quite you. handle it you know there's a really funny series of photographs in the locker room this year that they've just added a few days ago that I saw of the champion in 1950 Budge Patty champion in 1975 Arthur Ashe and the champion in 2000 Pete Sampras now what makes this funny is the fact that both Arthur Ashe and Pete 14, Sampras 30. are lefties in this photo in the locker room they've inverted the negatives ah. I'm not sure if it was a joke I can't quite figure it out if they, maybe they just didn't even notice is, is it a British thing perhaps I don't know left side of the road when they're driving maybe that's something to do with it I think they've seen enough of this guy to know he's a right-hander Well, Pete Sampras will serve, and they're three, three games, games apiece. Um, this is about the time change, where Pete will sneak in front with a break. Three all, four all. That's about when Pete normally gets his break. Well, Goran. Ivanisevic in straight sets. I know you've talked with uh, Pete on tape, an interview that we'll see later on uh, during our Wimbledon coverage, and uh, Ivanisevic was a major topic of, of conversation. Well, I asked Pete who bothers him the most on the surface, and Ivanisevic has been the guy that he's most feared playing here, partly because he's lefty. Even though Pete has a great record on the grass, he's still uncomfortable playing against someone with a huge lefty serve, like an Ivanisevic, like a Rosetsky. That one, not really close. Pete having a look anyway. Um, and a, the thing that he that really stuck out in my mind, he says that bothered him the most about Gorin is that he's very unpredictable. And Pete's right. I don't think Gorin knows where the ball's going, let alone you, it's hard for you to guess if he doesn't know. Clavette sneaking up to a 30-love lead here. 30 love. You look at Francisco Clavette this year. He's had some big wins, defeating Jan Michael Gamble, Greg Rosetsky. Indeed. Well, he's a veteran, and he's certainly not afraid to play the bigger names. Beat Andre Agassi, Leighton Hewitt, 40 love. Magnus Norman to win in uh, Scottsdale in the, in the final back in March, but has not been able to win back-to-back -back matches since Scottsdale. Right. Hasn't really been able to back it up. Game Clavette. Clavette with his second ace. Hold serve. We'll be right back. Time. Welcome back to Wimbledon, the oldest and most prestigious tennis tournament in the world as we Scan the grounds. Saffin, you saw in front. Hedman won the first set. 6-1 up. 5-1 of the second. Gamble and Woodruff. We had a peek in just uh, moments ago. They're one set apiece. And Woodruff, one game to love in the third set over Jan Michael Gamble. And back to center court. Francisco Clavet with a 4-3 lead in the second set. Back on serve here in the second set. No break so far this set. 
Sampras opens up with 128 mile an hour first serve. Jim, what's going on with uh, Marat Safin? Wins the, the U.S. Open. I know he's had an injury, muscle pull, but uh, has not, not played well. Well, what's happened, Marv, is, is he's been caught. Uh, he's been caught having to play tournaments in order to make a guaranteed amount of money from the ATP. Uh, if he plays certain tournaments, he gets X amount of dollars. And if he doesn't play these tournaments because he's injured, which has, had in fact, been the case, he loses this money, and it's, very, it's a very large amount of money. It's over a million dollars. And there's no penalty for him in the rankings to go play these tournaments. Uh, whether he plays them or not, he doesn't, he doesn't really get hurt. Oh, Pete's got that one covered. So what Murad has done is he's gone and he's played tournaments like Indian Wells and Key Biscayne earlier in the season and, and a little bit on the clay where he hasn't been properly prepared. And if it was going to impact his ranking, he wouldn't have played in order to get to get his money. And I think that uh, that's got to shatter your confidence when you go unprepared and you lose a lot of matches to guys that you normally wouldn't lose to. Now, the smart thing that he has done as we see Sampras open up a can down the middle with 129. 14, 15. Ouch. What Safin has done, which has been a very intelligent move, is he's hired Mats Wielander, the former number one player and, and a, a great all-surface champion, to be his coach. And that's still in the early innings, so it remains to be seen how that's going to work out. But Wielander, a very thoughtful and player and seemingly uh, a lot like the Andre Agassi-Brad Gilbert matchup where you have Brad Gilbert is a very thoughtful, headsy player who not quite as gifted physically as Andre Agassi, but is able to impact his wisdom into Agassi's game. Perhaps Wielander will have that same effect on Safin, who is probably the, the best ball striker out there next to Agassi. Agassi is, is, is as good as anyone has ever been, but Safin is a bigger version. He's got a bigger game, bigger serve, but he's just had problems mentally putting it all together. Four games apiece. Beat Sampras, Francisco Clavet here on center court. Good. taking a long walk. Looked like chalk flew up. And early on in this tournament, there's no dust back there from the grass being chewed up. Anything that does kind of come up is going to be chalk here in the first couple of days. This is. That's a nice play. Surprised Pete with that. Pete was looking for the ball to go cross court. But that just held that one. Put it right in the corner for the easy winner. point by Clavet. Pete's allowing him to dictate right now. He's slicing a lot of backhands right to the middle of the court, which is giving Clavet time to set up with his forehand, which is his better wing. And he's able to do what Pete Sampras does not like to do, which is play defense on the surface. 14 left. You look back earlier in the career of Pete Sampras, not a fan of playing on grass uh, says uh, that he thought it was a fast surface that was unfair and admits that he oh. had a negative attitude about playing here at Wimbledon. Well, you could see that in, in his record early on. He lost the first first round two years out of the blocks, finally won a round in his third year out. 
But Pete made the switch, started working with Tim Gullickson. Tim got him to shorten up his backswing on the return to serve. And I think uh, the return to serve has been the key for Pete. I think he's always had the serve, but he couldn't break early in his career. And now you'll see him just chipping forehands and backhands, just ensuring that he gets the ball back in play. 40-30. Couple loose errors by Clavette, but still 40-30 to take a 5-4 lead here in the second set. Control the point with his forehand was able to switch the momentum, Deuce. get aggressive. That's what he, needs. he doesn't want to be playing defense out here. He wants to have Clavette running to the backhand corner, trying to slice a passing shot by him. That's that's, uh, that's working in Pete's favor for sure if he can get that happening. backhand by Pete. That's a shot. That the looping backhand is, is not a shot that he plays a lot on grass. He likes that on the hard court to back his opponent off of the baseline so he can take control of the point. But on grass, the ball doesn't bounce up as much, so it loses its effectiveness. Second set. Welcome back to Center Court at Wimbledon on TNT. Francisco Clavette with a five games to four lead Time. in the second set. Pete Sampras taking the first 6 4. And Barry Cowan of Great Britain just won his match. And he is now waiting in the wings. He'll face the winner between Sampras and Clavette. Well, Sampras seemingly should get through this match, and then Callan as a wild card, given a place in the draw because he's British. Good effort for him to get through against his fellow Brit in straight sets, Mark Hilton, but really not posing a threat to Pete Sampras at all. Um, the one guy in that section, Harold Levy, uh, could pose a little bit more of a threat to Pete. He played well last week in Nottingham, reaching the final, actually defeating Andy Roddick in the semifinals along the way. Um, but... Andy Roddick is not a, nearly as experienced as Pete Sampras and not quite the grass court player yet. Perhaps he will be, but. And we will see the much heralded Andy Roddick, the 18-year-old out of Boca Raton, Florida. Later on, he'll make his Wimbledon debut. We'll have it for you live as he goes up against Ivo Hoibergen. Very Switzerland. Very pumped up to see. And to get out here and play. Just want to see what he's going to play like. Is he going to change his game? Is he going to serve and volley? Talked to him yesterday. He said he's going to do a little bit of both. A little bit of the baseline, a little serve and volley. We'll see. Boy, he's been on a fast track. Very fast track. He, he's the real deal. Oh. Pete Sampras has said 13, that uh, Roddick is the future of American tennis. I don't think that's really a, a, an, an argument at this point. He's, he's won. Well, there she is. Ah. Thank you to the BBC for that. Bridget Wilson slash Sampras. The crowd feeling better already. You going to be all right, Jim? I'm better now. The, just a little water will be fine. Thanks. Paul Anacone on your left. Pete's agent in the center, Jeff Schwartz. <laughs> Cl 
Michael J. calling out burro or donkey. <laughs> oh, there's another word that I could use, but uh, this is a family program in Spanish. Um, Andy Roddick, back to the subject, is without a doubt the real deal. He's won two tournaments here, and really his first season on tour, and showed an affectation for playing in the okay, big Sanford. moments. As we see Sanford close up to five all. This one could be headed for a tiebreaker. Five games. Roddick, in, in fact, beating Sampras in Miami on the center court at the, the match the tournament at Key Biscayne, beating Michael Chang on the center court in the French Open. Um, you see ranked 88 at age 18. There's a couple couple youngsters in there I'm familiar with. Yes. Oh, I was the first one into the top 80 and the first one out of the game. That's <laughs> Like I say, there's dog ears. Correlation on, there. They're, they're dog ears on tour, Marv. Everyone counts for seven. I'm really about 65 years old. <laughs> Let's to service. But Roddick was the fastest of all the young Americans that you saw there to, to win a tournament. Took him 10 tournaments on tour before he got his first victory. And he seems to love the big moment, which is all you can really ask. Beautiful running forehand by Sampras. He just taking that slice right here, getting himself back into the point. Clavette's got a volley up to him, and now Clavette covering the open court. Peach just kind of hooks that, just puts a little side spin on it so the ball hooks back into the court for the easy passing shot. <laughs> or it looks easy. Love 30. And that is the uh, third double fault served up by Francisco Clavet. Clavet, 32 years old from Madrid, Spain. Okay. Eighth appearance at Wimbledon. Last year won his opening round match and then lost to Tomas Enqvist in straight sets. In 98, did make it to the fourth round. And this is a dangerous moment for Francisco. Yeah, Pete usually seizes these moments by chipping and charging. I think a good second serve there prevented him from doing that. And then a sloppy 15, error. 15. Pete won't be happy with that one. One thing that can be said about Clavette is he's a competitor. He's ready to play on any surface. He's going to fight you to the death. Oh. A couple sloppy mistakes by Pete. Really would have needed to hammer down, tighten his game up, and force Clavette to come with something good. Instead, Pete gives him two free points, and we're back to 30 all. Could just be a little rust in the game still. 40, 30. It's not a big serve at 109 miles an hour. That's a sub, subpar serve on tour these days. Okay, Clavet. Francisco Clavet pulling it out to take a six game to five lead in the second set. Clavet leads six game. Welcome back to Wimbledon, about a 20 minute subway ride from central London and once you're here on the grounds at Wimbledon it feels like a uh, combination of a park and a museum you're like you're visiting a shrine we welcome you back Marv Albert with Jim Courier Ernie Johnson handling the studio chores will be with you until about eight o'clock tonight both the Eastern and Pacific with our live coverage as we return to center court Pete Sampras and Francisco Clavet Sampras on serve. Sampras took the first set, 6-4. Clavette with a 6-5 lead here on the second. Well, there's a sweet return there. A really good second serve by Pete, and Clavette just leans out there. Love 15. Gets the two hands on it, stays with it. 
flicks it with his wrist, somehow manages to control it right into the corner. Great shot. Well, that really trying to force the issue. That was a great return off of a really tough serve by Sampras up the middle. And for a little extra down the line, knowing that Pete was in position, couldn't handle it. Sampras right behind him. 30-15. Clovet kind of slipping and sliding on that one as he tried to change directions. And I can't help but think that if we're at Roland Garros right now, Pete Sampras serving at 5-6, love 15 would be very uncomfortable. And here, a month later, very comfortable, 40, probably not a lot of worry in his brain as he's serving at, at love 15, just thinking, ah, just make a couple first serves. At, at this stage, it'll never happen at uh, Roland Garros for Pete Sampras. That never is not agree? a word, never is not a word that I would use just because I respect Pete too much to use that word. And I know he's going to keep trying until he stops playing, but I think the likelihood decreases with each year that passes by. Is that as politically correctly as I can say that? As I said, it might never happen. Well done. 40-30. <laughs> All right, checking some of the other matches that are taking place elsewhere on the grounds. Safin and Noel now five apiece in the second set. Safin won the first. And Tim Henman having an easy time against the uh, qualifier from Moscow, the 21-year-old, Artem Durapasco. He'll be ready for tea here very shortly. And we're ready for a tiebreaker, yeah, Mark. Sampras holding serve, 6-all. The first of probably many tiebreakers over the Six fortnight for Pete Sampras. First player to seven wins it but you must win by two points. Getting a scan of the royal box here. See in the pink there is a singer named Cliff Richard who's kind of yes. uh, an Elvis type mm. personality over here and a huge tennis fan. And a natty dresser, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> 1-0, <laughs> One thing Pete's gonna have to do is tighten up his backhand return because he's giving away too many points on it right now. Clavet seemingly going exclusively to the backhand, and why not if Pete's missing the return? Now two serves for Sampras. We're in the tie break. Second set. Sampras taking the first 6-4. One over. And fires the ace. That is number 15 for Sampras. What a luxury. 15 aces. <laughs> Teen aces is a good tournament for Francisco Clavet. It's like Pete wants to change a, change a racket right now, which is, most players would hate to change rackets in the middle of a tiebreaker because you just don't, sometimes it takes a point or two to, to get used to the tension again. But Pete here choosing to get a fresh one rather than risk breaking a string. He can see on the gut strings that it's starting to fray and he might break one in the breaker. And he'd, he'd rather not risk breaking one and just pull out a fresh one. <laughs> Pete thinking that they weren't gonna call that Two one well. out, but he did Sampras. get the semi-late call. Pete's never had a problem going pulling out a fresh racket and coming out. I've never seen him have doubts about it. A lot of players, myself included, would wonder the first couple points, get used to the grip, get used to the tension. It's a little different because your, your strings generally loosen up when you play with them for a while. You'd like to warm up? Generally. But uh, Pete, 
Just goes out and fires. He's got so much self-belief. And I would think he leads the circuit in changing rackets. Yeah, I would say so. Oh. Tool. That one just out as well. So in this tie break there, two apiece. P probably breaks more strings or has more rackets strung than anyone on tour all year. He strings about seven or eight rackets up before each match. Going through a lot of gut. Oh, the friendly neck cord. A good stretch by Clavetta off of a good, good Sampras pass down the line. Pete stays with that, hits it firm, and that Three, one just two, off the Clevett. top of his frame. That's well done. <laughs> Gives it the old, I really didn't mean to do that, but I'm glad it happened. I don't know why we still do that. The old hand gesture, gesture. Oof. Sorry about that. Sampras got away with one there. A couple of loose volleys. Three old. Now, Marvin, the NBA, do you see guys apologizing when they clank one off the backboard and it drops in the net? No. Doesn't happen, does very, it? Very, very rarely. Usually a wry grin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, teammates will let that particular person hear it uh, from the bench. Well, we don't have any teammates this out here. This is so. a little bit more sportsmanship involved here. Not to say they're not sportsmen. Well, we will say hey. that they're not sincere. <laughs> we are coming up on 2.30 in the afternoon here in London. This match has gone an hour and 19. We're in the tie break, second three, set, Sampras. and Pete Sampras has taken a 4-3 lead after winning the first set 6-4. On serve so far in this tie break. One, one point here. If Sampras wins one of these next two points, he'll, he'll be serving to serve it out on serve, and this is, this is the pressure moment for Clavette right here. Gutsy forehand by Clavet. Takes it right up the Ooh. line. Let's see where this one goes. Right on the line. Fine shot under pressure. Four all. Consistent player. He's finished in the top 50 the last Five seven four, years, which is very impressive. But is this a, a surprise here in this opening round match? Well, I think <laughs> Clavette's best chance against Pete Sampras is going to be in the opening match because once Pete gets underway at this tournament, as we've seen by his record, he's virtually unbeatable. So for him to be in a tiebreaker right now in the second set doesn't surprise me. If we're to win it, I'm going to be a little surprised. He handles that volley with ease. And we'll get a set point for somebody five after all. this one. It's five all. But frankly, I was a little surprised that Pete, at 3-4, four, four, Clavette serving to Pete, wasn't able to get to net. He was in a baseline rally, and I thought, that's the moment. Get into net, put pressure on him, make him beat you with a passing shot. Ow. All right. 6-5, Pete's done his job on serve. 6-5. Now he's got set point to take two sets to love lead.
first to seven wins the tie break but you must win by two points. Slides, but he's coming in, set, puts a pressure on Clavet. Couldn't handle it. And Clavet thought it was out, but Sampras has taken the tie break and a two sets to love lead in this opening match. Ernie Johnson back at you from our Wimbledon studio. You've been watching Pete Sampras live here on TNT as he moves to the third set, having taken the first two from Francisco Clavet. Meantime, on court one, Marat Safin, the U.S. Open champion, in a little bit of a struggle with Jerome Noll, a Wimbledon first-timer, but he did roar back in the second set to take it, and he's up two sets to love. Also, Britain's favorite son, Tim Henman, today is a winner. 1-1-1 one, one, and one over Deripasco of Russia. And uh, Serena Williams, if you're just joining us, it took her 39 minutes today to do away with Rita Kudikish. 6-1-1. Six love. So both of those matches on court two supposed to be the graveyard for seeds. Not quite. Our locale, of course, court 18 right here. And Jan Michael Gamble playing Chris Woodruff right now. And uh, boy, it's been a great match. They split the first two sets. And it's 5 4 Woodruff. I think we need more on this. And who better to tell us about that than Marv Albert and Jim Courier, guys? All right, thanks, Ernie. Ernie making editorial decisions. Now. He is, yes. From the studio. Absolutely. There's Jan Michael Gamble. Serving to tie it up here. Get it to five apiece. It's 40-30 for Gamble. Again, Gamble. This guy's just doing battle out here. This one could go a while. Well, we're talking about the matches out on the graveyard court, court number two. But all that court is right now, it's just a little breakfast court. There's a lot of bagels and breadsticks going on out yeah. there. 6-0 and 6-1. We've got a match here on court 18. Chad Michael Gamble seated here for the first time. One of three Americans seated among the top 16. The others are Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi, and this is 28-year-old Chris Woodruff out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Turn from the backhand wing of Jay Michael picking. there. Chris not doing enough with a serve. Paying the price. Fifteen. Oh. But that's the side he really wants to to look to go to. See, Gamble's a two-hander on the forehand side as well as a backhand, but he's gone to dropping to a one-handed forehand on his return to serve to give him a little more, it's a little more leverage, a little more reach going out wide. Just, it's a good decision as far as getting reach. I'm not so sure that he returns quite as well. Based on his results this year, though, I think it's, uh, that's probably been yes. a wise decision. He has had a superb run, John Michael Gamble. Best season of his career winning at Delray Beach back in March, reaching the final at the Erickson Open in Miami, losing to Andre Agassi in the final. And he's made it to the quarterfinals or better in seven of his first eight tournaments of the year. That's a fantastic start to the year. That's a sweet approach there. A nice pass right down the line and on the full stretch, a beautiful cross-court volley. He 
These guys played in Delray Beach. We've talked about that earlier. Woodruff having a few match points, eventually losing to Gamble. Gamble going on to take the title and, and all those great results you talked about, Marv. Unfortunately for Woodruff, that match seemed to have sapped a little of his confidence, yeah. going one Woodruff. and six since then. But he's in this one. Six, five, five, six third set. Five, third set. Back at Wimbledon, we're on court 18. Chris Woodruff going up against Jan Michael Gamble, and Jan Michael has come a, a long way over the past five years. Looks a lot better than most of the stocks I own, Marv. <laughs> yeah, you see here in 1996, right when he was getting started on the tour, Jan Michael really worked hard on his, not only his game, but he worked hard on his body and got stronger. He was a little slider guy back in those days. But he's just been consistently working and working and improving his game, dropping to the one-handed forehand for the return to serve, seemingly working for him based on his ranking. And it's just a question of confidence for him. 15 left. We yeah, talked earlier. Go ahead, Marv. We, we talked earlier about Gamble's ability to come back and save matches down match point 11 times on his stretch all the way to Key Biscayne. And that's just confidence. That turn your season around winning one or two of those matches. Boy, you win four or five where you're down match point. Mm, that's going to give you a lot of self-belief. Yeah, this is ace number 20 for Jan Michael, who's trailing six oh, games to five in the third set. It's number 21. Just a little outside, I think, Jan Michael. It's not a bad play at 40, love, though. You can take a little more risk. And he airs it out on this one. Goes right up the line. He likes this shot. Just a little off target. Still 40-15, though. So we're headed for another tiebreaker. Earlier we saw Sampras and Clavette involved Six control. in a, a tiebreak. Tie Jad Michael out of Spokane, Washington. Actually, Colbert, Washington, about 20 miles outside of Spokane. See, last year, Jim Michael with his best result here to date in the quarterfinals. <laughs> Some good entertaining points going on here. These guys are ripping the ball in the corners. And a look at Chris One, Woodruff out of Knoxville. This is his fifth appearance at Wimbledon. Last year, he lost in the opening round to Gustavo Kirten in four sets. You know, Chris had a, an interesting knee injury, kicking yes. a football that took him out of the whole entire 1998 season. And it's nice to see him back on tour. He has made it back from arthroscopic knee surgery, sprained the knee. What, at a high school football field in Atlanta? In Atlanta, <laughs> kicking, kicking away. Kicking with fellow touring pro Richie Renneberg. One. That was a little tight call there. But we're back on serve one all here. The tie break. How do you explain that injury to your coach? Uh, you don't. Kicking a football. You come up with, uh, with some kind of excuse of you're training really hard on the field, running on the track, and there was a pebble, <laughs> something came up. Two. 
one. Gambo. These guys are both happy to stay back and rip from the baseline like it's a regular hard court. This court, unlike the center court, has been practiced on prior to the championships. They allow the players to practice a little bit on the courts to kind of break them in, with the exception of the show courts, center court, court one, and court two. So this court will have a little better footing and probably a little better bounce in the opening few days because the players have chewed it up with their shoes. Just working the corners, running Gamble side to side, just cool. cracks this backhand right into the corner. Hollywood does well just to get there, and then Country, going to use her nicknames at this point, takes it right into the corner for the winner. Country Chris Woodruff and Hollywood Jan Michael <laughs> Gamble. Jan Michael featured among the 50 most beautiful people in the world by People Magazine. Hard to argue with that. Right out of Baywatch. Three, two. And that looks like a bad bounce there for Woodruff. That ball back close to the baseline where the court is scuffed up. Just looked like he got jammed on it. And a little mini break here for Gamble. 3-2. He brings the noise with a big serve out wide. 4-2, Gamble. And Michael Gamble with a 4-2 lead in the tie break. A one set apiece. Now Gamble... 0 oh, and 6 in, in his last six tiebreakers, so trying to kind of break that string right here. Looking good. And center court, they are on serve. Earlier we were looking in on Pete Sampras and Francisco Clavet. And Barat Safin having some difficulties in the uh, third set on Court one. Five two. Make it five two for Gamble. Gamble. A couple big serves when he needed them right there. Didn't have to hit any other shots. Always a luxury. Lucky for Woodruff there. There's the soft neck cord we've spoken about at Wimbledon. Ball just kind of trickling over. Nothing Gamble could do to get there. This one just hits and just dies. for Woodruff there, but he had to work for his points. Where Gamble Five, got two free Gamble. points with his serve. That's why I always favor the bigger server in the tiebreaker on this surface. If you can get a few swings, 
you're gonna you just have a better chance of winning the point. You get the nice free points on your serve. You're gonna win more tiebreakers than not. And Jimmy, get the idea. Both players affected by the heat. 86 degrees here in London. It's unusual here. It's usually cold and rainy, but uh, so far. Our luck with the telecast last year. Hopefully, we'll hold again this year. Let for service. A great weather last year. It would be nice to have two years running of days like today. Woodruff will get a look at a second serve here. 5-4. Points don't get a whole lot bigger than this. One set apiece. Too bad for Woodruff. He played a really strong point up there, a positive point. Six four, gamble. Going toe to toe, forehand to forehand, both both the guys weaker sides, and then he goes get, finally gets one to his strength, his backhand, and flags it. Two set points now for Jan Michael Gamble. Two sets to one. About seven games to six. Welcome back to Wimbledon. Day one here on TNT. 12 hours worth of coverage. And a great look for him up above. Center court and court one. Remember, Jennifer Capriotti's first round match will be live here on TNT today. Same deal with 18-year-old Andy Roddick. Right now, here's some of the action going on at court 18. Of course, you've been watching this match. Jan Michael Gamble and Chris Woodruff in a uh, titanic struggle on court 18. Now two sets to one for Gamble. Meantime, on center court, well, I tell you, these guys have got to be weary by now. Marv and Jim Courier back at center court. All right, Ernie, you're talking about you guys. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> We're fit. We just well, run back and forth between these courts. No I'm, problem. Yeah, I'm always weary. I don't know about you, Jim, but... Only the jet lag that gets me, Marv. Sampras up two sets to love. James Sampras. And Pete Sampras has taken a three games to two lead in the third set. Time. Back at Wimbledon. As this uh, capacity crowd at center court enjoys the, <laughs> the festivities, some support for uh, Pete Sampras, the defending champion, last year winning for the seventh time. Did not come easy a year ago, playing with the tendonitis in his left shin and foot from the uh, second round on. Played all seven matches here on center court. His career record now 38 and one here on center court. <laughs> 38 and one is that's insane. <laughs> Biggest court in the world, and he just made it his own backyard. Nice backhand pass here by Clavet. Francisco Clavet, 32 year old from Madrid, Spain. As we touched on earlier, he has finished in the top 50 of the last seven years. 
which is 14 up. very impressive. Now, Sampras has done it the last 11 years. Right. And you say top 50, and a lot of people say, well, 50, so what? But uh, that's... That's impressive. Yes. So that's a shot that... Ooh, that's well done by Quebec. Get some appreciation from the crowd. Of course, the crowd here probably starting to root a little bit for Clavette. It's not that they want Sampras to lose. They just want to see a little more of Pete Sampras out here. It's commendable to be in the top 50 for seven years. It's strong. Mm. Sampras now in the top 10 for uh, probably close to 10 years, if not more. That's a little stronger. And for Clavette, his fourth love game on serve. So they're three all in the third. And Pete Sampras is three points away from holding serve for 100th consecutive time at Wimbledon, dating back to last year's second round against Justin Gimmelstop. That's pretty good. Yes. You're just not going to lose like that. I remember one time where it did happen where Stefan Edberg lost to Michael Stieck here without dropping serve. Lost a couple tiebreakers, lost a four-set match. He broke Stieck like once. Couldn't handle the tiebreakers. Now two points from that milestone. And to taking a 4-3 second set, a third set, excuse me, lead. from holding Fortuna. serve for a 100th consecutive time. I don't think Pete really cares about it, but it's kind of fun for us to talk about. The only thing he cares about is holding up that golden trophy at the end of the two weeks. Oh! Well, when he looks back at the videotape of this telecast, as you know, <laughs> he will say, it's pretty good. I'll be getting a couple phone calls for sure. Probably not congratulatory either. <laughs> what do you mean I was a little rusty in the first set? Some bad bounces out there. I, I would think, though, he looks at things very objectively. I think so. I think he, he should and seemingly does have a lot of peace of mind about his standing in the game and his career. And, and uh, Pete's not one to get overly emotional about too many things. Sampras. And Sampras holds serve for the 100th consecutive time here at Wimbledon. Back at center court at Wimbledon. Pete Sampras, Francisco Clavette, closing in on two hours playing time. It is 3 o'clock here in London. P. Sampras just a couple of games away from closing out a reasonably comfortable first round match if he can get a break of serve here. Haven't had a break of serve in a while since the first set. Fifteen left. I want to point out that last year was a third round match against Gimmelstab, who unfortunately is injured this year, came over, was preparing to play and hurt his back. And certainly send our best wishes out to Justin for a speedy recovery. Hope we'll be back in time for the U.S. Open. There's a sweet backhand down the line. Francisco Clavette. 30 
not a whole lot on this approach shot, but fairly deep. Clovat takes it inside out. Very nicely done. Flick of the wrist. We were talking earlier about Francisco Clavet finishing in the the top 50 over the past seven years, and uh, right now he's number 30 on the ATP Tour rankings. That's just very consistent. Oh. Game Clavet. He holds serve to take us to four all. Clavet, by becoming an all-court player, has been able to con continue to maintain that over. ranking in the top 50. If you're exclusively a clay court player like a lot of his countrymen from, from Spain are, it's very hard to maintain the ranking because you only have three to four months a year where you have a lot of points available to you in the clay court season. He's able to make points, for example, in Scottsdale where he had a win this year on a hard court. So he wants to stay, stay highly ranked. You either got to win Roland Garros if you're a clay court player or you have to become an all court player. And for Clavette, his first tournament since he lost in the uh, first round of the French last month, but has had some huge victories this Whoa. year. Jan Michael Gamble, Greg Rosetsky, beat Andre Agassi, Leighton Hewitt, and Magnus Norman. He beat Andre when Andre was just on fire earlier this year. One of the few guys to beat Andre before the clay court season started. Well judged by Pete. And an update on Marat Safin and Julia Knoll. Safin has been able to break back five apiece. In the third, Marat Safin, 21 years old, out of Moscow, now plays out of Monte Carlo. Ho-hum, 127 miles an hour down the tee for and number 20. <laughs> Just another day at the office for Pete Sampras. This is really the perfect opening match for him to play a guy like Clavette, who's going to give him rhythm and just allow Pete to really do what he wants to do, which is hit a lot of balls, kind of get the feel for the court again after a year. Perfect opening match for Pete. Dan Sampras. Sampras holding serve once again. And has a 5-4 lead in the third. Pete Sampras, one game away from the match. 5-4 in the third over Francisco Clement. And still to come here on Wimbledon 2001 on TNT, we'll see Jennifer Capriotti, the 18-year-old Andy Roddick. It's coming up later on. There's no better story in, in perhaps all of sport right now than Jennifer Capriotti's comeback halfway to the Grand Slam with titles in Australia and Roland Garros just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, thanks for coming, Francisco. We're booking your flight to Ibiza. Love 15. Fifteen all. Capriati really capturing everyone's imagination over here in England. I think, I think worldwide. So many people just rooting for her. She's been through, through so much. For her to turn it around this way and be better than she's ever been is, well, it's, it's the feel-good story. <laughs> Sampras wisely choosing to go right down the middle with that overhead, take away the potential error. 15, 30. Very deep lob, and then Clavette had it right on his racket and 
not real pleased with that. He knows he should have at least gotten that ball back into play and made Pete hit one more shot. 15-30, two points away from first round victory for Pete. Great play coming in, putting the pressure on Clavette. Clavette comes up with the That's backhand, you. seemingly on the line. Let's see right here. We're going to see any chalk? Well, if the cameraman could do his job a little better. Jim taking a shot at the BBC. They can't hear us, Marv. In those situations, generally, you listen to the crowd. They're right there. Crowd a little restless on that call. And that brings up match point. 14. Real sloppy error by Clavette there. Maybe he's thinking that uh, he can catch that 5 o'clock flight back. It's only 3. Francisco Clavet still alive. Hanging around. Juice. Pete gave the kind of lean, like, just blow it out a little bit, a little gust of wind. No such luck. Back at Deuce. Let's for sips. the legs there it is oh, <laughs> could you see that one coming once again match Sampras. point for Sampras won his opening round match in straight sets over Francisco Clavet of Spain. It was nice the way Pete kind of looked around after he won that point. Kind of like he was taking it all in. I'm happy to be back in my home. You see, his wife's also happy. Always a relief to get that first one off your back. So now Pete sneaks into the second round where he's going to be facing... A British player, Harry Cowan. Sampras wins three sets to love, 6-4, 7-6, six, six, That four. really shouldn't be too difficult for Pete to get through. Sargisian here and Levy. Sargisian, good player on grass, but I don't think he, any of these guys really pose too much of a threat. I think Pete has a pretty nice move into the fourth round. So it is a first step for Pete Sampras who is gunning for five Wimbledon titles in a row, and overall, his eighth. So yeah, yeah, Pete hearing it from this appreciative crowd. Two hours and one minute for the straight set victory by Pete Sampras. We welcome you back, Ernie Johnson, in our studio, and you get a good look at London on a Monday afternoon at 3.13. And thank you, wherever you are in the States, for joining us today. We're with you for 12 hours. Got a good match going on. Marat Safin, who is the U.S. Open champion, won the first two sets. But the Austrian Noel 
Able to take the third set right there and send it to okay. a fourth. Third set, no. Seven games to five. And so, work still to do for Murat Safin. Meantime, you've seen Pete, Pete Sampras already today win in straight sets, and his opener next on center court will be Jennifer Capriotti. Now, here at Wimbledon in 1990, Jennifer Capriotti became the youngest seed in Grand Slam history. She was only 14 and was seeded number 12. The next year, she made it to the semis on a run that included a win over Martina Navratilova. But just two years later, she dropped off the pro tour, unhappy and disenchanted with tennis. The next time a lot of people saw her, it was in a police mugshot after an arrest for drug possession. Fast forward now seven years, and here's that phenom slash troubled teen adding another moniker two-time Grand Slam champion. Capriotti is playing the best tennis of her life, and she sat down with Mary Carrillo to discuss that inner fire. Not that long ago, you said you'd be happy to get back into the top 20. I mean, that was your goal. Now you're halfway to a Grand Slam. Has this, been, has this whole life of yours been some kind of diabolical plan? You know, <laughs> you, I mean, are we just catching up to it now? 